So next we have the direct income hypothesis, and it's kind of exactly what it what you think it might be. Basically, it's that dis this hypothesis says that disparities exist because rich people just have more financial resources uh, to throw at health. So they have an expanded production possibilities frontier because they have more resources. So if you look at the um, the poor person's utility curve and production possibilities curve relative to that, this point would be a region outside of their possibilities frontier curve, which means a point that person would not be able to reach. Uh, that's why their H star for the poor individual and their Z star will be lower than the corresponding Z star and H star for the uh, rich individual. Uh, next is the allostatic load hypothesis. This is the idea that prolonged or repeated exposure to stress is um, unhealthy and it can cause an increased rate of aging, essentially. So um, in the Grossman model, aging is represented by the rate of depreciation of health capital, which is signified by delta. So the higher stress load leads to a higher delta. If you remember back from last week, the cost of investing in health, it's R, the rate of return, which represents uh, the, like the financial rate of return. It represents the opportunity cost. And then delta, which is the rate of depreciation. So you have to, the benefits of an additional investment in health have to outweigh these two costs. So when the cost is higher, your H stars is going to be lower. Your investment is going to be lower. Um, but here, when delta low is lower and the costs of investing in your health are lower, um, then you are able to reach a higher level of health. So finally, the Whitehall study, it's a really important study in public health. And what they do is compare the health status of British civil servants. So these are people in the UK who work for um, the British government. It's in terms of their background, they're relatively homogenous. They share a lot of their workplace environments and they all have access to the same health care through the National Health Service. But they find that morbidity and mortality rates are higher for the low grade civil servants. Um, they have more stressful work and home environments. And that's um, partly to do with just financial resources, but it's also kind of this more broad issue of social class and standing and community. Th another um, aspect of health disparities could be not just, you know, directly the cause of in income. Uh, in addition, there is the stress of poverty, you know, which is well uh, documented in the Whitehall study. Um, but it's also the idea of income inequality. So not just the actual financial resources that you have, but just the fact of there being these huge disparities in income in a population. So this hypothesis is that health disparities are caused by an unequal distribution of income. And it's related to the allostatic load hypothesis in that more equal societies are less stressful for people to live in and therefore healthier. Um, and perhaps, you know, so it's related to allostatic load, it's related to the Whitehall study. What are the policy implications of this? If it's true, then policy makers should aim to reduce inequality in their communities. And if that's true, the health status of a society can decline even if average income rises, if that income is much more concentrated. You know, if that's true, then that means income inequality is a public health issue for us to deal with.